I'm live. Keto for real life people here. Good afternoon from East Texas where the rain never ends on the weekends. <laughs> I hope everybody else is having a lovely Saturday. You can hear my coffee maker in the background. <laughs> so today we are going to be doing keto crackers and I have got this set so hopefully we can get this going. Um, this is a new format. Um, I've been getting requests on YouTube to do a live, so I thought, how awesome is this? Ah, Kathy, hello, hello. I see it's a bubble and it says hello. That's awesome. So, this is what we're gonna do, and then it disappears. <laughs> All right, so. Here's the deal, guys. I told you that we were going to go ahead and do this, try to make crackers. Now, I don't know how it's going to turn out, and I hope it doesn't get too glitchy. I've got my phone set to do not disturb so that I don't um, get phone calls and interruptions during this time. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Good. You guys keep up with me here. So, here's the deal. I'm going to use the same recipe as I use for the nutritional yeast bread. And what I did was go ahead and bake a batch to see how they were going to turn out. I think you click on the screen to see the chat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that information. Um, if I tap it, let's see what happens. Yes, you're right. That's great information. <laughs> I love it. So anyways, what I did, guys, is I don't know how this is going to... There's my hubby. Hi, hubby. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. So the first batch I made, I want to show it to y'all. Hold on. This is, this is what I ended up with. So I figured I could show you the end product at the beginning and then show you how I did it. But I'm still not happy. I'm pleased but I'm not happy, and this is why. Um, this they 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 they're beautiful, and they taste delicious. And they have a little bit of a crunch, but they're still too bread-like in the center. So, I think what I need to do is maybe go a little bit thinner, and maybe cut the yeast in half because I like the flavor that it lends. Or I. Or maybe I should just cut the yeast out. But these only took 45 minutes. And look at that pile that I've got. So if you were having a party or you just want to make yourself a nice batch of these up, you definitely can. But, again, still not quite perfect. And I wanted to, oh, here we go. I wanted to show you something else. When I checked on these after 30 minutes, and they had, I had already cut them in squares while they were baking. This was 30 minutes, you guys. A 30 minute flatbread that you could easily easily make with this nutritional yeast bread recipe I'm gonna tap this here ah okay so I could see people anyways you could easily take this yeast recipe and roll it out flat the whole thing dock it bake it 30 minutes later I ended up with this beautiful golden and I've got some wonderful seasoning on there and you could make a pizza with this, and it wouldn't be a cheese, fat head cheese a pizza. Wouldn't that be a fat head cheese a pizza? <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, then, so that's an option. So this is one of these recipes that I am evolving and working on. So we're going to get started, and I'm going to show you what I did to achieve this, okay? And I thought I would take a minute while we're doing this as well. I've got three eggs here, and I need the whites out of those yeg, hey, those yeggs. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the ingredients list as well so that people can see uh, which ingredients I'm using and be more specific. Oh, my goodness, I'm making a mess already. Here we go. Come here, you egg, egg, egg white. <laughs> and once I get this these egg whites separated, then I'm going to move on to that level right there and show you all. And can I show you guys something? 
you know, you there's so many hacks out there for egg whites. Um, you can use the egg shell itself, and you can um, just tip it back and forth until you get just the white. But then people complain about the yolk breaking. You can even take a water bottle and just empty water bottle and suck the yolk up into it. But what I'll do is I break it in there and I just pick it up because the it separates off of it on its own. And then I drop it in another little dish and I just, it, it holds on beautifully. It's easy, it's cheap, it's uh, simple. I love simple. And then I just break another one off in it and it just, the yolk just comes up in your hand. That's my hack and now I have three egg whites for this recipe. Uh, what do I do with the yolks? Well, the last time I made yeast bread and I had the yolks left over, I was doing OMAD so I was eating one meal a day at that point. So I took two eggs plus the three egg yolks and I made a beautiful omelet with it. It was delicious. Yes, you're welcome guys. So let's talk ingredients before we get started because I don't know who's got their ingredients and who's who's going along with me. Um, let me pull these over here. And I'm gonna tell you everything that I'm using and the brand of everything I'm using. And I'm gonna hold it up because somebody asked me, would you please hold uh, your products up so that, uh, there you go, bro Bryce, long for the ride. So I'm gonna hold these up, This and it's backwards, but it's the blanched almond flour. It's super fine. I bought it at Walmart. It was $11 and like 90 something cents. It was almost $12 for a two pound bag. So I'm gonna use one and a quarter cup almond flour. And then this is what I have, whole psyllium husk, okay? Um, oh cool, it's the Now brand. I paid $5.99 for this bag at my health food store. And I use five tablespoons of this, okay? So five tablespoons of the now whole psyllium husks. And then nutritional yeast, okay? Um, this is the Bragg's brand. Okay, great. <laughs> to me, it looks, everything looks backwards, so. Anyways, this is the Bragg's brand, but you don't have, there are other brands, so you just get whatever is available. Our Walmart started selling this in a different brand, but it's the same thing. I checked it out. You're going to use one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Hello, my colorful keto sister, Dory. I love you, girl. Um, so one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, and then I have bought the Fleshman's Rapid Rise instant yeast and it calls for one teaspoon for the recipe but i'm thinking for the crackers because i do i'm still getting my lift y'all you guys i know there's people out there who have trouble with their bread being wet inside and i think it has to do with the fact that it's under mixed so we're going to cover that today okay um well me thinks huh okay cool i like that it does that for me that's awesome Anyways, one teaspoon is what that is, but I think y'all for the crackers, I'm gonna change it to half a teaspoon. No, I'm just gonna leave it alone because I already have it pre-mixed. <laughs> All right, for wet ingredients, guys, we have two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. Um, I bought this one at my local health food store and it was only $2.99 for this big bottle of apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. Oops, I bumped, I bumped me, I bumped me. Oh, and then we have our three egg whites. And lest we forget, I did have a teaspoon of salt in there, guys. One teaspoon of salt. And so what I need to do quickly, I'll turn you all so you can see me move this direction, is I need one cup of boiling water. And I, I basically, I just use my Keurig because it's like one or two degrees off from boiling. So I'm just gonna, reach over here, pull that out. I'm gonna hit the eight ounce and I get a perfect one ounce, uh, eight ounce cup of boiling water. Now then, I'm gonna see if there's, okay. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get this going. And here's the thing, I, I will talk to you as I go along because like I said, I tried a batch 
prior to going live today just to see where I was at, would, I, would it work the first time out, what was, was I going to be happy with it, uh, was, I get to get to get, was I going to get to show y'all perfection. Hmm. Not quite. Close, but not quite. Definitely close. So, here we go. Um, I'm going to try to move this around so that you guys, I'm going to try to tilt it without knocking myself over, all right? And, and so you can see what I am doing here. You can see my messy counter as I'm trying to cook, right? Oh, let me tilt it just a bit. Let me see if I can bring all that. Now, you guys can hear me okay? And you can see down in the bowl. All right. So, again, what I have here is one and one quarter cup of almond flour and guys I don't use a spoon to measure it I just scoop my cup into the bag okay I scoop it in I flatten it out and I just brush it off even and then I use my quarter cup and I do the same thing so I get one and one quarter cup of the almond flour five tablespoons of the psyllium husk into the mix and in this one, I have one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, one teaspoon of the Rapid Rise Instant Yeast, and one teaspoon of the pink salt. And that goes in. And so I'm using this paddle on my mixer. And what I like to do is I get it down here, I lock it, and then I just mix my dry ingredients for a minute, guys. I'm gonna let you see there. I just kind of give it a second just to incorporate the dry ingredients and mix them together. And then I turn it off. Okay, um, let me move this back so that you can see down into that bowl. And here's the thing. This is the this is the important part, y'all. Okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this up. This is the important part. Because we're fixing to do the mixing, and the mixing is gonna determine whether you have wet dough or nice fluffy bread or crackers. Okay, um, I'm going to add the hot water and turn the mixer on and I'm going to let you see how I let it mix together and then I'll add the egg whites and then I'll keep mixing. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to move this over here. So I'm going to turn my mixer on low. All right, and I'm going to pour this hot water into the dry mixture. And that way I'm not cooking my eggs. See, now that's already in there, all right? So now I'm just gonna pour my egg whites and my vinegar, my two teaspoons of vinegar in here. And I'm gonna just let this mix. Once it gets kind of incorporated, I'm gonna kick this up just about right there. It's just a half a notch up, and I'm going to let it mix and mix and mix because that psyllium husk is absorbing the liquids that I just put in there. So I think this is where it becomes very important to see what it looks like. Sometimes I even, uh, like halfway through this, I will scrape the bowl down just a bit. And now that it's more together, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm, I'm putting it on. Are you guys still with me? Good. You guys do that. I'm going to yell at my husband to call RC. Husband! I swear, I, it doesn't matter what I'm doing live. That's when somebody decides to call me. <laughs> of course, he doesn't know I'm live. So, Anyways, we're still mixing, still mixing. And do you see how it's kind of expanded now? Look how much dough there is. And it smells delicious, you guys. All right. And I'm just letting it go. I just, I want it to start kind of coming in on its own and to be patient. Husband! And my husband's deaf. Let's see if he hears me. I'm gonna just walk away from that for a second. It's mixing. I just want him to call my son so that we can find out. It's dark and rainy. Hey, husband, call RC, find out what he wants because he's trying to call me during this. <laughs> and that's real life, folks. <laughs> um, 
I don't know that an immersion stick blender would work because this stuff gets pretty darn thick, guys. Look, I'm gonna cut it off and I'm gonna set this back here so that you guys can see. Uh, unlock it and I'm, I, I'm gonna touch it, you know, to see how it feels. It's very sticky and and it has that feel that, to it that it should have, which is awesome. Okay, it's, it's, it's pulling, it just pulls away, it just pulls away from the bowl very easily, very easily. Okay, now I'm going to bring you guys back up here oh. and, and adjust you all. There we go. Hi, I'm back. I'm going to take my paddle off. I'm going to wipe my fingers off because I touched the dough. And this, guys, see how it just kind of folded in on itself? It's it's very well incorporated. Um, it is just a nice big... It's like a spongy ball. That's what we want. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to move you guys again and get you situated over here. <laughs> tricky, tricky me. Let me do this in a way that makes sense for everybody. I'm going to tilt this. I'm going to tilt this so that you can see the work board. You won't be able to see my face, but you can see the space that I'm working on, okay? And I have two sheets of parchment paper. You're going to need two sheets of this, okay? And I'll show you how why in just a second. Um, I'm going to turn this dough out on this here, and it is going to go on to my baking sheet directly here, and I'll show you how. Um, I have I have my heavy rolling pin today. You can use a regular one. It's just going to take a little more pressure and a little more working, but I'm using this one that it's, it's marble, so it's heavy. It's going to flatten things down for me. Now, initially, when you're working with... Um, when you're working with this dough, it's sticky, just like the fat head crease, so you just want your hands a little bit damp. Let me. And you're only gonna touch it for a minute, guys, okay? So, so basically all I'm doing is it's shaped and I'm just kind of flattening it down because I'm going to, I'm going to really, really, really roll this flat, as flat, flat, flat as I absolutely can, okay? And I'm just getting it started for me here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is rinse my hands real quick. Get that sticky dough off of there. And I'm going to take this piece of parchment sheet. And I'm going to put it over the top. And just kind of get it so that it's, it's stuck and in place. And then the rolling pin. So it's heavy, like I said, and I'm just going to start rolling it. And I'm going to go different directions with it. I want to keep it as long as I can and narrow, not as wide on the short side because of the pan's size. So if I can get it to just roll out super thin, that is what I want. These last ones, I thought I had thin enough, and I was actually worried that it wasn't was too thin, and it still wasn't thin enough. So, and don't worry about the shape of it, guys. This is, you know, as I get better at it, I will probably work on aesthetics a little bit more. But in the meantime, oh, it looks like a big fishy to me right now. I'm really just flattening this out as much as I can. You could even do this in half batches, you guys. I don't know about freezing this. It might be awesome to do, I don't know. But, I'm getting it thin, 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 thin. I've gone all the way to the edge here on this paper. But I don't care. I press forward because my last batch was just a little too thick. And I'm going to the edge with this one. 
and I'm coming around. I love having this little work space here. And I've gone, I'm going to go this direction. And then feel it. Feel it to see if it feels the same throughout, which it does. It's a little thick right there. And that feels pretty much like it should. Now, at this point, I can just kind of fold it over like this. And pull a baking sheet over here. And then I can put it on here and get it get it situated in my pan. Now, yes, it comes up this way, but I'm going to show you how I did this last time because I can just cut the extra pieces off, okay? Um, and just peel your paper off like that. And then with a sharp knife, what we're going to do, can you all see that okay? is I'm just going to run it along the edge of the pan and pull this excess dough off. You could, if you had room on your pan, you could easily uh, put it on another pan and use it. It's not that you're wasting it. It's just that I don't want it running up the sides of the pan. Okay, so here we have this. It's on a sheet pan, and it's very, very thin, y'all. Very thin. Now, with crackers, you have to dock it. You can't just, it, if I was to bake this, it would rise up like one big piece of bread, and then it would probably not be as good. But when you're making any kind of crackers or anything like that, we want to ventilate it. We want to put, poke little holes all through it so that uh, the air escapes and it doesn't rise as much. All righty. So what I've got is... I got my meat fork from my uh, silverware collection here, and I like the size of the, these tongs on it. And I'm just going to dock, 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 dock. I went looking for a, a you could buy an actual docker, which I think I will invest in because I'm going to be making crackers like crazy. But you just want to poke this and poke this and poke this as much as you can so that, again, the air in the bread escapes and we will get a more cracker-like texture, a flatbread texture, versus a big poofy mess on our hands. And like I said, guys, this is my first attempt at crackers today. I haven't pre-done it. What I usually do is play around in my kitchen until I find the, the recipe. And then once I get it how I like it, then I share it with y'all. Y'all have been impatient with me. <laughs> and I mean that in the sweetest way. Like, you're working on crackers? We must have crackers. We must. I agree with you. So why not go along on the journey together? And you can see the creative side of what it's like trying to figure it out on your own. <laughs> I can't see any comments. Are y'all commenting? Uh, all the parchment sandwich technique. Yes, yes, yes. I like the sandwich technique. So, yes, I am poking the snot out of this. All right, poking done. Now, the other thing that I did was I have this olive oil spray, and I just gave this a shot, just like, boom, over the whole top of it, so that I could add some seasonings. You can season your cracker any way you want to. Um, I chose some Himalayan pink salt with black pepper and garlic. It's kind of uh, chunky, as you can see. It's kind of rusticky. And I'm going to like shake. Ooh, ah. I'm glad I didn't pour. <laughs> so anyways, I'm just going to shake on this half of this bread. I'm going to shake that. And it just looks wonderful, you guys. It's so pretty going on. And it's you can add it as much or as little as you like. And then my other flavor choice was this garlic and herb. It has all kinds of herbs like rosemary and thyme and uh, orange peel, even paprika, um, carb zero. I mean, it's an unsalted just herb. Yeah, let's see, almost a live seasoning faux pas. <laughs> almost, almost. I'm going to talk to you later, bro Bryce. Yes. You're cracking me up, dude. 
you are cracking me up, dude. So there is no salt on this seasoning. So if you want to add salt, you can use your pink Himalayan. You could add your ground black pepper. I opt not. I opt not. This is kind of funny doing it this way, huh? Um, this is what I opt for. Because it has that herby, you know, garlicky rosemary. I decided a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese, which fit the bill. And I'm just going to pour some on my hand because I don't want to over sprinkle it. And just kind of give it a toss onto your flatbread, your cracker bread. And this is how it looks, guys. Delicious looking, right? Yes. Okay, so the oven is set. For $3.50 and it's going to go in there. Um, at this point, if I choose, could you just mix it into the batter? You sure could. If you wanted to make the whole thing taste like it throughout, you really could. Um, I like the, you know, when you buy the crackers that have like those different little seasonings on top. I love it. So what I'm going to do here, because I already made up a batch that I cut, I think I'm going to let this one go by itself as is and then I'm gonna let it see how crisp it'll get and then I might break it off into rustic you know triangles and squares um, yes yes it will it'll help melt the seasonings so I'm gonna think it, I could break this off into just rustic pieces you know it, this this again the opens possibilities up like crazy even if I don't end up with cracker texture today I've still come up with something that's very versatile as far as a flatbread goes as far as a new pizza crust goes um, absolutely de delicious I mean you could take this and and 30 minutes 30 minutes I pulled it out and it was like flatbread 30 minutes is all so that's fantastic that in 30 minutes you could be making your own wraps and flat, what are they called, Sammies? You know, like at Subway where they just use that flat bread and fill it with whatever they want. Mm-hmm, yes, I could do that. I could also just, you know, pull it out, put some mozzarella cheese on it and make some, and some garlic, call it cheesy garlic bread, red pepper flakes, whatever you like. So this is going in the oven and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do real quick. What I have going on here is I got my cutting board, I got my knife, I've got a little container of some softened cream cheese, I have some red peppers, roasted red peppers, and I'm going to use a little bit of this seasoning to tie in with what I'm doing here. Oh, and I didn't pre-open that. Oh, thank goodness it came out fine. It came out fine. So what I'm doing, guys, is because, we, you know, I was just so stoked to get some red peppers and some crackers and to have one of my favorite snacks of all time. Uh, it's a sprinkle with the garlic bread, cheesy bread sprinkle. You got it, girl. I'm telling you. These are um, roasted red bell peppers. A half a cup drained is six carbs. I'm not quite probably about a quarter cup but then I'm just gonna break it down so I could say that easily for three for three of these and all I'm gonna do is just take these sliced red roasted red peppers and I'm gonna get them super super chopped up I want them really ooh, really 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 small and fine and oh I'm gonna back up right there we go so I'm going to measure this just to be on the safe side because I know, you know, I don't count carbs and, and I don't think about how, you know, other people might be doing that and I'm just not. But that is nice and fine. It's almost, almost a puree. All right. Let's measure it for, for good, for good measure. This is a quarter cup. Let's see if I kind of guesstimate a four quarter cup. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. I, I, I'm not used to this little counter space here that I'm working on. It's not quite a quarter cup, but it's almost a quarter cup. All right. It is almost a quarter cup. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it to this cream cheese. And on its own, it's delicious, y'all. 
It's one of the bases I use for one of my catering foods that I used to do. And I just add a little bit of this garlic and herb seasoning. And I give it a really good mix. It's just cream cheese and red pepper and a little Italian herb seasoning. And it's not just your oregano, so it's, it's, it's kicked up. So that's what we end up with. It's super delicious. Let me move from one side to the other. Move that out of the way. And all I have to do, again, I usually, if when I make this up, guys, I usually make up a whole uh, pound of cream cheese and a whole jar of peppers and seasoning, and I put it in my stand mixer because I make it in my pinwheels with salami and spinach and other good stuff. Okay, so here's what we end up with. Let me come up to this here. Uh, the lighting is just god awful, isn't it? Can I show you guys? Uh, my lighting is terrible. He's terrible. Let me get you up here with me. Let's bring you up. <laughs> I'm going to take you all the way up to the counter. At least I get another two inches. Yay! So, at this point, even where I'm at right now with this bread, this flat bread, and this spread, to just be able to do something, you know, so, <laughs> guys, This is super delicious. This is really, really, really good. Um, I wish you could taste it. Hopefully you make your own. Mm. I definitely have to get this thinner. Thinner, thinner, thinner. And I wanna let it cook maybe longer. But it's gonna be one of those tricky things because thinner and long enough to get crisp but not burn. So you have to watch carefully. Um, I'm gonna move that right out of the way. Mm -mm -mm. Anybody have any questions for me? Oh, it's way better than Triscuit. I would say it kind of reminds me, well, right now it reminds me more of pita bread. That's what it reminds me of is pita bread, seasoned pita bread, because it's, it's not crisp yet. Um, I, again, I, I don't know if I need a bigger pan or maybe I should take that dough after I make it and cut it in half and cook it in two separate batches so that I can get it even thinner on this pan, I think. And carbs, girl, I don't know yet because you what you would have to do, you figure the recipe makes six rolls at three net carbs a piece, okay? So if you take this, that would be six times three is 18 for all of the whole 18 net carbs for the whole thing of bread 18 so if you were to take this and flatten it out and cook it up into teeny little squares and then you set how many you want for a serving you could keep it at least uh three three or less net carbs per serving you know because you would eat one roll for three net carbs so i would imagine you could get probably 12 crackers easily. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of crackers here, so we shall see. We'll have to figure it out, and when I perfect it, it'll be it'll be better, 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 better. You are so awesome to share your recipes. Thank you. You're welcome, Linda. Uh, so, so anyways, guys, that's where I'm at with this. It's it's a work in progress. It's uh, coming along. Um, if I don't get, achieve cracker status today, I will achieve cracker status tomorrow. <laughs> I'll just keep tweaking it and playing with it. But right now, we have delicious flatbread crackers. They're just not crispy yet. And that's what I want. More than anything, I want something I can bite into that's light and crispy and crunchy and not going to break your tooth or taste like almonds. Ah. Uh, Hard to make crackers from psyllium? Not really. 
Not really. Actually, it's not. I know it's. I know I'm gonna force it to do what my bidding. <laughs> yes, Sandra, that's what you're looking for. And we, I mean, that's one thing I miss more than anything. I don't miss bread as much, especially now that I've got this bread alternative here to do so many things with. I mean, heck. See, I did some of the end bits that were like just triangular shape. They are kind of like pita, you know. So, I miss the crunching foods too, girl. A lot, a lot. But I think that we're really close to Cracker uh, Bliss, and we're going to get there. <laughs> All right, so if anybody does, it has any more questions, yes, you can use a hand, with, a hand mixer, uh, Missy. You're just going to try to keep it on medium, and if it bogs down, then try to kick it up a notch. Um, I haven't used a hand mixer, so it does get thick. Be realized that. Uh, psyllium works better for crackers than... Yes, it does, Bryce. <laughs> and your food processor, that's good to know, Linda. So if you guys don't have a stand mixer, but you have a food processor, then you could easily do that, uh, do this recipe in there, easily. Um, I got a feeling I might be eliminating some yeast because that's what's giving me my, my rise. So it might just get harder and crunchier if I take it out. But we're going to see. I'm patient. So this has got to go in the oven for 30 minutes, y'all. Mm -hmm. Dough attachment. Yep. That works perfectly. So we've got 30 minutes, guys. And um, really, that's why I did the whole let's show you ahead of time type deal. Oh, look. It finally shows up a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. I'm already full. <laughs> I was, uh, huh? there went my knife. I had had some ham slices because I've been running all day. So I had some ham slices with a little bit of cheddar on it and some mustard quickly before I uh, started this. And then I ate a couple of these when they came out of the oven, taste testing, and now, now I'm stuffed again. So, all right, y'all. Thank you for showing up to my first uh, YouTube live event, everybody. Um, again, we're going to get this perfect. <laughs> would you like me to, would would y'all like me to just stay on here while this is cooking i mean i'll let y'all decide because i didn't want to just keep you while i i wait you know but we can definitely stay and hang together and uh chit chat if you like or what i can do is i can pop onto instagram and do a little short live with it and it'll cross over and it'll hit uh It'll hit Facebook and Instagram. Oh, yes, stay, stay, stay. All right, all right. We'll just hang together, guys. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing, baby. <laughs> it is pouring rain, and the lighting in here is terrible, y'all. Bryce will depart. Thanks for the recipe. Dude, you're so welcome. Catch up with you later. Yes, make it. I'm telling you guys, the the... The endless possibilities, that's the thing that I love with this. It's not just dinner rolls or hamburger buns. It's it's uh, the versatility. I, I'm even thinking, you know, you could take and make croutons for your salad and just toss them in little squares, the, the poofier ones when you make bread. You could actually cut them and cube it and just melt some butter and add some seasoning and you put them on a pan in the oven and let them slowly dry out. That's how you make cute croutons. Um, okay, yes, make sure, I. you know what? I think that it's important to say not to over mix, but I think I'm gonna change it up on there and say mix the shit out of it. <laughs> Oops, sorry, did I say that? But yes, I'm going to because I think every person who's had a problem with the bread, it's always been the same issue of it being kind of wet and sticky inside and not fully cooked like it won't cook it's because it got under mixed and uh, I even made the same mistake last weekend so I'm gonna see here what this says ah uh, yes no bad weather but it's coming I'm telling you yes all right oh in Phoenix it's already so hot we are Texans and plan on moving back this year <laughs> Oh, goodness. I didn't see you make the crackers. Did you make them in this video? Yes, uh, Judy, I did. I went through the whole process of, um, I had these ready, and then I went through the whole process of making them, 
and now that batch is in the oven. So, and I'm just gonna let it stay whole and see what we come up with. I bet I end up with flatbread again. <laughs> Gloomy and drizzling here in Northwest Indiana today. Linda. Um, split into three parts, making sesame buns and crackers. Yes, you know what? And I think that's gonna be key. I think what I've got going on here too is, is I should have probably split that dough in half worked with smaller portions that way it could get it even thinner like super thin somehow some way this chick is going to do it like i said if i don't succeed today y'all my husband leaves for work in the morning at three o'clock by the way this is our only day together we're supposed to have a date night tonight i'm so excited um but i'm home alone tomorrow so i will be at it again I'll have a private YouTube party. Um, only those people who came and visited me on Saturday get to come back and see me on Sunday because we're working on a recipe together, right? <laughs> oh, me being silly. Uh, the everything seasoning. I am on a mission to get that locally. I, I haven't ordered it. I don't, I'm trying to avoid having to order it. I'm sitting here sweating. Um, but... I let my Sam's Club membership uh, expire back in October. I, I don't shop there all the time. I'm a seasonal shopper. So I let it expire, and my girlfriend told me that's the, where she got hers seasoning was at Sam's Club. And I've checked all of our local stores and have yet to find it, so I'm going to have to go because it's my absolute favorite seasoning. Oh, well. I'm going to give these a, a look-see and see what we're going to get here. I mean, I'll take you with me, okay? So you don't get lonely. <laughs> um, I think I could adopt it more because it's doing a little looky wonky. It's, uh, it's still poofing a little too much. I know this sounds silly because I know that crackers in themselves don't necessarily have yeast, but the flavor of this is so good that I didn't want to take it out. And I might end up having to take it out. So, <sighs> Guys, I'm burning up. I don't know if I'm having a hot flash or what. It was chilly and cool all day. Um, made a flax cracker. Two pounds flax. Two, uh, I don't like flax crackers. But good for you. I just don't like them. I'm like, you know those by Crunchmaster? I used to eat those um, years ago when I tried being gluten-free. I had to just come outside for a minute and enjoy some cool air. Um... I used to eat those crackers, and and I would eat the uh, Blue Diamond Almond Crackers, and I hated how hard they were. They were just so hard and flavorless, and they hurt my teeth, and I just didn't care for them. I'm a, I'm a crispy, crispy girl kind of girl, you know? I like um, Ritz Crackers, Club Crackers, Cheez-Its, uh, Chicken and a Biscuits, yeah, Triscuits. I like those kind of crackers, so that's kind of where I'm at with my goals. Thanks for coming outside with me, guys. I'm just uh, killing time and cooling down. It is rainy. I don't know if I can flip this. Oh, I can. Y'all want to see how rainy it is? Hmm, let me see. It is rain, 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 rain. Yes, this is our yard. Uh, Laura says, I joined late. Can you list the ingredients again? Yeah, besides that, guys, I'm going to probably have to enlist the ingredients. <laughs> um, the ingredients are, I've got a mark on my face, um, almond flour, whole psyllium husk, nutritional yeast, Rapid Rise Instant Yeast, Salt, Egg Whites, Boiling Water, and Vinegar. <laughs> and that's what we got in there. Um, and then you can use seasonings of your choice to top your bread, your crackers. Uh, let's see, it was thin and light and I seasoned it, but I get, get it. Going to buy yeast today. Uh, yeah, and you know what? Uh, the nearest Trader Joe's, they finally built one here, um, but it's in Mesquite, which is probably about, mm, I don't know, about 60 miles or so from me. 
the only time I, and I don't go to Dallas very often. I maybe go to Dallas two or three times a year, you know. I stay in my little neck of the woods here in East Texas. We have Tyler, which is, uh, you know, I have a Tyler address, but it's rural. And um, really, I, Lindale, phone number, uh, only thing that's Tyler is my zip code. I mean, all my utilities, everything are Lindale, so. But Tyler's big enough I could get all of my stuff going that I need for the most part, except for this everything seasoning. <laughs> Ooh, oh, you grew up in Gladewater, so you know all about it, girl. You know what's available here. <laughs> um, any substitute for almond and coconut flour allergic? I have no idea yet, girl. Um, as I don't have allergies, I haven't messed around with... Um, alternates I and you can't have coconut flour because usually if you can't have almond flour you can have the coconut flour but I'll have to um, check into that and see what alternatives you can use uh, let's see would love to visit you I'm not far from East Texas easy Texas <laughs> where are you uh, where are you now Missy where do you uh, abide abode what part do you live in? Oh, Bossier. Yes, that's just, I'm halfway in between both, girl, right? My husband and I have talked about going to the boats. I love going to the boats. That's where we call going to the boats so you can gamble. <laughs> I go to the casino. Um, but he's never home long enough to do anything anymore, and I'm so busy with this. <laughs> I don't even have, I don't even look at my Facebook feed anymore. Seriously. Mmm, smells good in here, you guys. Oh, I gotta check on this now. Because we're coming up on another another checkpoint. Set you guys up here for one second. And we're gonna see what we get. I'm pulling this out to see where we're at. Oh, and it's still soft. But it is beautiful soft. You guys want to see, this is what I do when I'm developing, okay? Um, you know, I, I honestly, I don't know. That's a moisture thing, and those things don't, they're not solid, you know what I mean? They're kind of hollow and fatty. I'm going to move these off here. Okay, guys, so I'm going to set this here, and I'm going to bring this down a little bit so that you can see what I'm looking at okay i dropped a butter knife on the floor all right so here's oh that's hot here's the thing see at this point it is beautifully golden on both sides it could easily you could easily make this into a, a flatbread a pizza crust it's very soft and pliable um Now, I have a, uh, a thought here. What do I do with it? Oh, it's over here. I'm wondering if I set up this like this in the oven, I wonder if it would dry out. What do you think? Thoughts? Hmm? Because look at this. This is just a beautiful flatbread right now. Beautiful. Easily seasoned beautifully, but I think I'm gonna just take this and set it in the oven and see what I get. Huh? Okay. I need something to drink. I feel thirsty. You're gonna give the pork rinds a try? Hmm. Let me see here, guys. I'll pull you up right here. How's this? Oh, here we go. Okay, now I can catch up. I was checking all that. Okay. Pork rinds get really hard after being in the oven. That's good to know. See, that was my next thing for those Butterfinger fat bombs, y'all. 
my pork rinds are softening up on me. So I thought I was talking to Dory and I was like, what do you think if I take the pork rinds, maybe some pecans, I'll grind them together, toast it in the oven and let them get crispy. That was my thought. Yeah, Monica, that could be an issue too. Like I said, I think at this point I'm going to call this fat flatbread and then tomorrow I'm going to go at it again and I'm going to work in smaller batches. I'm going to adjust the yeast and, um, I'm going to play with it a little bit. I think I can make it in smaller batches so that it has the opportunity to be, because I here it was a mistake last week that I made. Okay. I used a double batch of this, uh, recipe trying to save time decided to just double it up right away and I undermixed it so what happened when I undermixed it was the inside didn't cook properly but the outside I just kept I it just kept cooking and cooking and I was like nope so I cut them in half and then I put them in the oven and um we just let them go for a while and they just got crisper and crisper and they were delicious so that's what gave me the idea to do crackers with this recipe. And that's why I didn't change the recipe yet. But once I get an idea in my head, the, I, I keep going with it. That's the, the thing with it. I got to keep going with it. So when I start, like, talking about it a little bit, like, I'm still working on the butter, sorry, the Butterfinger recipe. And um, I'm not happy with that fat bomb yet. I got two of them. Um, I changed it up way too much, and I lost... I got creaminess I want, but I lost my crunchiness. So I'm still playing with that recipe too. But it's good because once I get it all done, I usually I, I keep my notebook out and I, I'm like, okay, nope, scratch. This is this I'm changing it to this and and then I'll keep going. That's how I develop it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Dasani Dasani sparkling black cherry. Y'all, this is so yummy. Ah, there's really not a, hey, y'all, if you haven't subscribed to my channel on YouTube, please make sure you do uh, hit the subscribe and then hit the little bell. It'll ding -a, -ling a ling and it'll notify you when I'm live or anytime I've posted a new video, you'll get a notification from YouTube and that'll let you know that stuff's going over here on over here too. So, whew, gosh, guys. I don't know that I tried the dragon fruit yet. I tried the mango pineapple and I did not like it at all. It didn't taste like pineapple. It just mostly tasted like mango, which I really, I think it was pineapple tropical is what it's called, but it didn't taste like pineapple. I didn't like it. I bought this one this time. Um, again, uh, it's great for my wine. It's mostly, I use it for wine. <laughs> you guys want to see how much wine I drank last night at my brother-in-law's? <laughs> Yeah, it didn't taste, it didn't taste like it. I was not thrilled. So I went and bought, I went and bought this big giant bottle of wine. It's a big one. You see how much? I actually had two big tall glasses of wine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I get my big tall cup, you know, like those uh, 24 ounce tumblers, and I, I pour about, oh, about that much wine in the bottom, and then I add a whole can of this on top. I've gotten to become a real weenie. I like the flavor of my wine. Uh, I can't even stand the taste of it strong anymore. I have pure wine, it's full strength, can't do it. But I still get to enjoy the flavor of wine, and, and it's relaxing, and then if I feel like it, I do a shot of tequila. It works. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Oh, I don't like how this doesn't show anything here. Okay, there we go. It's not as typey typey as like on Facebook. It's kind of. Oh, let's see. I cooked fat head pizza on a stone last night and it, and it crisped up, and hubby loved it. Could you use a stone for the crackers? That's a good thought. I, I don't have one, but I need to get one. Mine broke years ago, and I never replaced it. I'm so afraid to drink any wine, thinking it'll stall me, because it seems on on my keto, keto journey, if I do anything out of the norm, I stall. I have been drinking my wine this whole entire time. The whole time I've start, since I started. That's one thing I haven't given up. Now, like I said, I, I dilute it 
it's wine flavored sparkling water. It, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Um, but there's been a few times, at least my sister-in-law's 40th birthday, for instance, was back in January. I think it was like January 20th, January 19th, somewhere in there. And we went to her birthday party. I had three drinks. And, uh, I was tanked. Tanked. And I was like, wow. Um, anyways, I've still lost weight, but I'm, I'm mindful to know that because I'm keto, I have to be... Uh, mindful of my alcohol consumption. I've even gone upwards of having three shots of something in a night. Um, you know, we were out for a special occasion here a month or so ago and listening to bands and music. You know how it is. You go out to a big old steakhouse place. And, um, anyways, throughout the evening, you know, they continued. Everybody was having a wonderful time. I, I ended up having three shots. but I, And I was drinking vodka with club, club soda and lime all night long. I did feel a little ooky the next day, and my my inflammation was kind of ooky for one or two days, but it was gone, and I still continued to eat keto, so like I said, it's real life. I'm not all about a, a race to lose weight. I'm just about, you know, going along my journey. I want steady progress, but I, I'm not worried about it like a week if I have a, a week of activities and it's sort of like when somebody goes on vacation, they go, oh, I went off plan. I don't really, per se, go off plan. I enjoy a little uh, drinking with everybody, but I will still keep my food keto. Exactly. You have to live. So, I'm going to check on this real quick. You guys get to see me turn around, bend over, put my butt up in the air so I can look in my oven. So, uh, let's see where we're at. Ooh, it's hot. I'm going to tell you it's steamy. Let me see here. We are achieving things, guys. We are achieving things. Let me put you here. And pull you back. Because this thing is hot. Now you can see that it's much browner. And it's much firmer. But it's still flatbread. I don't care what you do. It is pliable. It's soft. <laughs> so, but I don't think I want to go any, any longer. So what I need to do, guys, let me pull you up here a little bit. I think what I need to do, again, is go back to the drawing board. And I'll do it tomorrow. I'll just go on YouTube tomorrow and anybody wants to join me while I play with it. What is your wine of choice, Miss Nancy? I like red wine. Um, I like my cabs. And I like, uh, my favorite is, uh, it's called Decadence by, damn, damn, damn. They do Midnight, they do Silk or whatever. Oh. Apothic. I think it's Apothic. And it's called Decadence. And I love the flavor of that wine, but it's hard for me to find now all of a sudden. So, And it was reasonably, reasonably priced. Um, I bought this one on sale yesterday at our local uh, Berkshire's. And I think it was like on sale for $11 normally. You know, like 12 14 bucks, whatever. Saved a couple bucks on it. I hadn't tried it. It's all right. It's a little dry for my liking. But I normally go for cabs. Um, and I like Pinot Noir is my absolute, you know, favorite of the dark wines. I like that purpley, inky wine. Mm, I love it. it. You know, the darker the wine, they say, the younger you look. <laughs> so I like drinking those. Ah, yes, I love Pinot. Uh, Pinot Grigio. Now, on the white wines, I like them, but I get, I could find that those ones would probably get me in more trouble. Why? Because they're so light. Uh, like, I like a, the Sauvignon Blanc, and I like the Chardonnay, but I, I, again, I still mix my sparkling water with them. I tried the peach sparkling water with the uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and I put a little drop of my meal in it, and it tasted just like Moscato. So, but it's so light and fruity and fizzy, and I'm like, ooh, I could, I could drink a lot of this, and I, I just, uh, I stick with my cabs. So here we go, guys. Look, this is the top of the bread. This is, it's still bread, okay? 
It, it's fun for special occasions, uh, occasions, Linda. This is what the bottom of the bread looks like, you guys. And you see how pliable that is? So easily, I mean, you could fold it over. You could just tear this. You could make it rustic bread. You could have it with a salad wedge. You could make a, a flat sandwich bread with this. I'm going to use it up. It's not going to go to waste, that's for sure. But, again, it's very delicious. It's delicious. So, all right, guys. That's what I ended up with. Not quite crackers yet. Ended up with flatbread. Tomorrow I will, tomorrow I will end up with crackers. <laughs> I'm going to end up with them tomorrow. So, you guys... Um, I imagine it would dry out, but that's really good stuff. So I'm going to just have to, uh, like I said, look, I mean, just it's so pliable. Even my husband liked it, and he's not keto. So no, I don't think I'm going to adjust the vinegar at all if I take out the yeast. It, um, I think I'm just going to leave that in there. Um, I think, again, I think I need to eliminate yeast. And I think I need to cut the batch in half, okay? And I think I need to work with smaller portions and so that I can really get it thin. I mean, I would like my cracker to be about not quite as thick as this. I mean, can you see how thick that is still? It is more like a flatbread, and it really needs to be... Uh, I mean, it's about the thickness of a saltine cracker. But... It's too soft. Yes, half that maybe. I'm thinking you're right, Linda. I'm thinking you're right. All right, y'all. It's 3 o'clock. We, we gave it our shot. We ended up with some really nice, cool flatbread. Great for salads. Great for soups. Great for uh, pizzas. All kinds of fun stuff. But we'll try again tomorrow. If y'all want to join me, Leave comments below. Say yes, I'll be back. To, if you want, I want to watch again. If if the majority of you want to watch again, I'll just do it again tomorrow. And if I don't hear very much feedback, say good luck, Nancy, and I'll catch you on the rebound. <laughs> Remember, guys, fats first, moderate protein, low carb, and get you some. <laughs> See y'all later.